but brave is pretty good and, and and is it the best one like what's what's the gold standard of browsers out there for you like if somebody were to say i want the best privacy focused browser out there I'm a big fan of LibreWolf. Um, LibreWolf is a version of Firefox because Firefox is also open source. Um, the stock Firefox is pretty good, but um, the guys at LibreWolf took Firefox, built some more privacy stuff on top of it, and it's just all that much better, right? Um, the reason why I like Firefox also is because it has um, it has a feature called um, cookie containers, and I should explain what cookies are because we we see them all the time, right? You open some website and you see yeah, do you accept that this huge, cookie? huge, annoying banner at the bottom of every web page. Yeah. Thanks, EU. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and cookies enable, for example, like you close your browser. You say you're logged into Facebook. You close your browser, you turn your computer off, turn it back on, fire it up again, and you're still logged into Facebook, right? How does that work? Even though you turn your computer off, mm -hmm. even if your battery dies. So you know, like your circuits are like drained of electricity, right? But somehow it still knows that you're logged in. Yeah. Um, I like to compare it to like, you know, you go to a restaurant and it's counter service and you get a number, you go to your table and that number is there. It tells them where to bring your food. Mm -hmm. um, that's essentially what cookies are. It's a really big number um, that's stored on your computer. So when you go log in, your computer says, hey, Facebook, here's my cookie number. And, and Facebook's like, oh, I recognize you. Um, here's all your stuff that you like. Yeah, here's all your stuff that you like. So yeah. super useful because it's really nice to not have to log in um, after your computer restarts. Um, the downside, the dark side of it though, is that cookies can be used to track you because if you have that Facebook number on your computer or on your table, metaphorically speaking, and you go to some other website, that's a Facebook partner, which most businesses are because there's just too much money to like not be in that program. Then it sends information to Facebook also while you're on that site, even if that site is completely unrelated, um, to, to Facebook. And this is an advertising partnership, right? Where a website yes. will say, we're going to interface with Facebook, use their database of all your biographical information and the things that you like so that we can serve you ads that are relevant and then, you know, make money yeah. from Facebook on that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So there's a commercial application, advertising application, but it's also, I mean, that technology can be applied to anything to, to just track what websites you go to. Um, so one really, uh, what I recommend people do is just to use, have a browser that's just for social media and only do social media stuff on that browser. So you're not worried about the cookie tracking, um, going to other parts of, of your digital life. Um, and that's probably the simplest thing you can do. Mm -hmm. And going back to the, the Firefox cookie profile containers, um, that's a feature where I can create a new tab. And in that tab, that then they're color coded too, so you can easily tell them. Um, but within itself, it segments and separates blocks of cookies from each other. Um, so I can have like a Facebook um, container and I know it, I'm in the Facebook one because there's a big blue strip at the top of it. Mm -hmm. And then I don't have to switch browsers. It's just kind of built in. Sure. Um, so this would be for like yellow to red level things where you might not want the convenience of Facebook serving you relevant ads, uh, right. but you would want the privacy of knowing something I do on this tab isn't visible to the website serving me this tab. So right. That exactly. would be another problem layer of uh, OAuth. Like, oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, logging in using your Google yes. login or something like that because that, that makes that tie. So if you use what's, OAuth. What's OAuth? Um, so maybe you, you, you'd log into some site and it, you can put in a username and a password, but there's also a button that says log in with Apple, log in with Facebook. I see, yeah. Yeah, so the way that works behind the scenes is exactly what I'm talking about, where um, the website is basically saying, Facebook knows who you are, you're logged into Facebook, so let's use that identity to prove you are who you say you are to us. Um, yeah, that's a great example of like super, this technology at work. Super convenient because yeah. you just like click the button and you don't have to do a email yeah. authentication or any kind of that kind of stuff. It just kind of automatically yeah. you know, snaps in. Yeah, yeah, and making accounts is annoying. Every time I'm on yeah. some site and they're like, "Want to create an account with us or create an account to like view this content?" I'm like, "Nope, not doing that." <laughs> or no. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Right. So yeah, I, again, security versus convenience. Maybe for some things, like all my work stuff, I use OAuth for because it makes sense, yeah. right? And that's absolutely in the green, mm -hmm. you know? What about, okay, so there's two things, there's two things I want to make sure we get to. Um, what about VPNs? Everyone thinks like, okay, if I access the web via VPN, I'm going to be safe. Like, mm -hmm. is that true? I'm glad you brought that up because that's kind of like the privacy 
ticket for most that you hear about. Um, no, man, all I got to do is right click and go into yeah. privacy mode. <laughs> right, right. right. Yeah. Oh, incognito uh, mode. Incognito that's, browser. That's, that's, that's what people think yeah. is actual security and privacy. Well, yeah, let's start there first. What <laughs> the hell is incognito mode? And is that anything that's actual privacy at all? All incognito mode is, is a mode where you're basically telling your browser, don't add this to the history. That's it. So, <laughs> but, but there was a lawsuit, wasn't there, that said that, that it was still sending your information to the central server. Oh, it, yeah, it absolutely is. Because yeah. you get the same effect as just going to your, clearing your history. Mm. In fact, I think there was a browser that if you clear your history too many times, it'll actually tell you like, hey, you know incognito mode exists, right? Like, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Hey, weirdo. Yeah. <laughs> Just make this yeah. easy on yourself. <laughs> Just make it exactly. <laughs> uh, but going back to the VPN thing, um, let me describe what a VPN is. Um, I like to use like a mob um, analogy. Like if you're Tony Soprano, right? Um, you're not going to give orders directly to your guys, right? The way mob bosses, they always have a trusted person that they spread their orders to. Uh, you got your conciliary. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you tell him what you want to spread out. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of what a VPN is, where instead of all your traffic coming directly out of your internet connection, um, it goes to this trusted person or this trusted entity, and they send your traffic out. Mm. So it's hard to tell that it came from you. But the key word here is trusted, because if, you, if you're now, now your VPN company, whoever that may be, has all the information, all your web history, everything, all your traffic. Um, so it's really important that they're trustworthy. How do you know if they're trustworthy? Well, right off the bat, I recommend that um, if you're gonna go with a VPN, definitely go with one that's not in um, the Five Eyes, which is a intelligence treaty, intelligence sharing treaty between, let's see if I get this right, uh, the United States, Great Britain, um, New Zealand, I think, Australia, I think, and there's one more. Canada. Canada, Canada thank you. Canada's the one we always forget. We yeah. <laughs> I, I thought it was Israel, but I said that wrong. It's Canada. Yes. Yeah. And there's also a 14 eyes too, which is a different, different oh, thing. Oh, shit. Yeah. But, <laughs> How many eyes we got here? There's like a yeah. seven, a nine, and then, a, yeah, they keep just <laughs> adding more countries. It's like yeah, food right. allergens. It's so annoying. Anyway. Yeah, all the big VPN companies have servers all over the world, which is another benefit of VPNs, by the way. Um, I can fire up my VPN, say I want to connect to a server in Germany, and now all of a sudden, like my search engine is in German because it thinks I'm in Germany. Because I am in Germany. My connection is coming and originating from Germany. Uh, which is can be really useful for and like it's serving you ads that assume that you're probably yeah, from Germany. Totally. <laughs> <laughs> totally. It's but, actually, it's actually very convenient when using Der Spiegel, like the, 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 when, oh. I, when I was doing all the research on the, um, on the research on the Nord Stream pipeline and mm -hmm. I was having a bugger of a time getting through their website in America. And then I switched the over to Germany for it and it was way cleaner and it worked way better. Could you still view it in English? Yeah. Yeah. I just oh. used the translator on uh, brave to translate it. Cool. Yeah. Versus like the English version of the website was just not as good. Yeah. So, so your question around like the VPN company, like well, let's use Proton for example, cause they have yeah. like mail and they have a VPN and all sorts yeah. of stuff. They're based in Switzerland, right? They're based in Switzerland, which yep. has very robust laws around privacy and they're, yep. and know, they're known for that historically. Like, yeah. Known to be neutral. Yep. Right. So because the company's based there, regardless of what, where, what country your, your information is routed through as you're browsing, if a, if a country were to try to, uh, you know, elicit your data from them, they would have a hard time doing that or a harder time doing that because yeah. Switzerland's not known to be very preferential to providing that information to governments that might want it. Actually, right? that's not true. Is it not? Yeah. Well, let me tell you why. Correct the record. This mm -hmm. is the, this isn't to say, this isn't to undermine why you should go for security. This isn't to say that, oh, just don't bother because it's all, because the government is in charge anyways. But for 50 years, a Swiss company was the monopoly in the creation of uh, devices, manual devices to encrypt information. Mm. The CIA bought them within the first two years of operation. Damn it. Damn and it. we know this because the Washington Post released an article two year, a year ago basically exposing this. So 48 years ago, they yeah. bought them. The CIA did. I don't remember exactly what the dates are. I'm probably getting the dates but wrong. But basically from the their inception, beginning. when encryption became important, they bought them within the first couple of years of operation and then ran behind the scenes a backdoor program using the Swiss. So while you might say like the Swiss had the best laws domestically, mm -hmm. while you might say all these other things, and until we get the actual, we, we're not going to get an actual free place unless we have intelligence community reform. Mm 
Mm-hmm. We have to place hard limits yeah. on their ability to surveil people in, in, the, in, the, in the recognition that in order to get freedom, we have to have a little bit of risk here. We yep. have to we put a cookie container trust. around the FBI. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Keep well, it in their box. CIA in this case. But yeah. Or that. yeah, and that's a totally fair point. Um, no company is going to go to jail for you. That's what it comes down to. Mm. Um, if the Swiss police knock, down, knock on Proton's door for whatever reason, they're going to give you up. Yeah. Um, if the CIA goes through a, a shell corporation to buy the Proton and then install back doors, you're never going to hear about it. Right. Yikes. Right. right. So is... But here's the plus side, right? The <laughs> whole reason Proton exists is privacy. They don't right. have a business without it. Sure. So they have a financial incentive. Yep. I like that, you know? Yeah. Um, and I also, there's another company called Molvad. They're out of Sweden. Um, the jurisdiction is not quite as good because I think Sweden is one of the 14 eyes. Mm. Um, but what's cool about Molvad is that you can buy VPN time with, with crypto. Mm. You can buy it with Monero, right? Mm. Which, which is, is a awesome. privacy coin. Yeah, which is a privacy coin. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so... They literally, you go to Mulvad and they give you like a 16, 24 digit number and that's all the information they have on you. Hmm. And this has been tested by fire because I think Mulvad got raided hmm. at some point and um, they, didn't get it, they didn't get anything because their servers are configured to like wipe their, everything runs in memory, you know? So as soon as power hmm. is cut to their servers, like, and maybe other VPNs company operates the same way, but hmm. um they just have a sterling reputation in the community for that reason. And Proton has a really high reputation as well. Mm. And it's like it being in the mob, like reputation is everything. You sure. know? Especially when this is a product that you're literally, your only reason you're using it is for privacy. So trust is everything. Yeah. Just confirming Sweden is part of 14 nice. So you're correct. Yep. It's a lot of eyeballs. I yep. like it. <laughs> Just think of a spider. Yeah. Don't like it. A hydra. Yeah, exactly. 